Alright internet, Miss Knickknack here and welcome to my list of the top 10 games of E3, in my opinion. <laughs> Yes guys, so E3 is finally over after a long week of announcements and gameplay and trailer upon trailer upon trailer and every article I could possibly read from every publication from IGN to Eurogamer. <laughs> we have a lot to talk about this year, a lot of games came out that were very interesting. I will say there wasn't anything majorly surprising this year, as much as people can say, oh my god Crash Bandicoot, I wasn't expecting that. For some reason I really was expecting Crash Bandicoot to be a thing this year. So yeah, there's only a few things that really took me by surprise. But anyway, let's get on with my list of my top 10 favourite games shown at E3. But first, we're going to talk about my honourable mentions. So I have three currently on my honourable mentions list. I'm afraid they just missed out on the top spots. Number one honourable mention is Death Stranding, the new Hideo Kojima game, which the trailer was weird, but amazing. I love stuff like that, where it's just very bizarre, but it's like atmospheric and you kind of get the kind of tone of it, but very interesting. I know the reason it isn't higher up on my list, or actually in my top 10, is because, yeah, we got a trailer, but I didn't see any gameplay. I don't know anything about the game whatsoever, apart from the fact that Norman Reedus is naked in it. <laughs> so I have two other sequels in my honourable mentions list, the first of which, which is Watch Dogs 2. Now, I didn't play a whole lot of Watch Dogs 1, I only played a bit of it, watched Sam play it. I didn't buy it myself, I mainly watched other people play it, but, um, yeah, this one has me a lot more interested than the first one, mainly because the protagonist seems a lot more interesting than what we had in the original, which was the guy in the trench coat. So yeah, now we have a lot more, we have a hipster dude, and some people with fancy bedazzled jackets and Daft Punk masks, which I'm all about. And the second honourable mention that is a sequel <laughs> is Titanfall 2. Now I adored the first Titanfall game. Really did. I think it was quite underrated, and it, but unfortunately, it quickly lost its player base, and things got lost behind people getting season passes, and like maps got to other people using maps, and other people couldn't afford them. And it all kind of became hidden behind a paywall. But uh, yeah, I really enjoyed Titanfall, and I'm very happy that there is a single player campaign because that is what I think was very much missing from the first game. But I'm very excited for that, and I've also already got pre-ordered the ridiculous, silly, expensive collector's edition with the two scale helmet. <laughs> To add to my collection, you know, because you always need collectibles. Now onto my top 10 list of my favourite games at E3. Number 10 is For Honor. Uh, Ubisoft showed this off in their press conference. We saw a bit of it last year, which was kind of a bit the multiplayer stuff we saw. I didn't actually realise it had a single player campaign, which is what they showed this year, and it looks amazing. It kind of reminds me of Rise when that came out on Xbox One. It looks a bit like that, but a lot more epic. And I love it. It looks brutal and gory and amazing and I need it right now. Number 9 on my list is Final Fantasy XV. Now normally I think this would be a bit higher but I think at this point I've seen most of what is to offer. So don't get me wrong, I'm stupidly excited for it to come out. However, at this point I've seen a lot of it already. So my hype level could not go much higher. So yes, Final Fantasy XV looks amazing. The Titan thing they showed in the actual press conference looked insane looked absolutely amazing, like the scale is just ridiculous. So I cannot wait for Final Fantasy XV to come out later in the year. I think it's going to be amazing, I hope it's going to be amazing. We've waited 10 years, we've waited long enough people. Number 8 on my list, 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 is Civilization VI. Now for those of you who don't know, I am an enormous fan of the Civilization games. I played the crap out of Civ V and I'm very much excited for Civilization VI, and I think I may be one of the only people who really, really digs the new art style they're going for. Kind of a little bit more cartoony, but I feel like when you take away like the realistic look of a lot of games like that, so you look at Civ V and it had like a proper realistic art style to it, they've taken it away, but I think when you make something look realistic, it dates it more than if you give it a cartoony look. I think that can age really well. It's like games that are cel-shaded, age I think really well, Whereas games that were meant to be realistic like five years ago are starting to look a bit dated now. Do you guys see what I mean? But yeah, Civ 6, I cannot wait for it. It looks beautiful and I can't wait to sink hundreds of hours into it. Number 7 on my list is South Park The Fraction Butthole. And I absolutely adored The Stick of Truth. I played the crap out of it. I collected all the Tim Perkins. Yeah, so good. And I uh, love seeing uh, Trey Parker and Matt Stone at the press conference. They are always an absolute treat to behold. And the gameplay they showed looked hilarious. And PC Principal is in the game. Can we just, for a moment, think about that? 
He's amazing, and I can't wait, actually, for that game to come out. Can't come soon enough, if you ask me. Number six on my list is Dishonored 2. Now, I did play Dishonored 1, not as much as Sam did, he played the crap out of that, but I very much enjoyed it, and the footage they've shown from the press conference this year looks astounding. The new powers you have and the new abilities you have, like we've seen that the girl has this ability to like chain deaths together so you can like put this thing on one person and then link it to one or two other people and then whichever kind of fate befalls that person it will link to the other two and that fate will befall them as well amazing it looks so cool and also that section they showed where she was holding that thing i don't know what it was but it showed a building in the past and then on this side it's really showed it in the future and it like moved in time with everything you were doing that looks so amazing! And I can't wait to have a go on that. So yes, Dishonored 2. Please, another one I've already pre-ordered because of the collector's edition. You give me a nice collector's edition with statues and stuff, I will be all over it. Number five is one I was not expecting to like very much, which is Days Gone, which they showed in the Sony press conference. When they showed the first trailer of it early on in the press conference, I was not interested in the slightest. I thought, hmm, great, another zombie game. Yay! <laughs> it's pretty much my thoughts. I didn't really care that much, but um, yeah, well, good lord. When they showed that demo at the end of it, my mind was just like, Poof. I'm amazed that the like, game engine is able to have that many enemies on screen at once, and they were like falling over each other that bit. How amazing was that bit in the gameplay demo where they just opened the doors and you came spilling out? Like, I have nightmares about zombie apocalypses where they are like fast zombies, so that is like my worst fear. That. That actual gameplay demo made me feel a bit sick because <laughs> it was very... Like, when things like start to get you trapped, it makes me very uncomfortable. So yeah, that was well done for that and I'm really excited about that now. Just from that gameplay demo, it looked absolutely incredible. So yes, can't wait to see more of that in the future. Number four is a bit of a cop-out because it is Skyrim Remastered or Skyrim The Special Edition or whatever they've decided to call it. Yeah, I know this game's already out and we're getting a remaster, but I don't care, I still squeezed with joy when they showed that announcement trailer for the game. It looks incredible. And yes, I know, PC Master Race. Oh, it looked like that for us how many years ago? Yeah, I know, I've got it on PC as well. I've got it modded. It looks beautiful. But I can't wait to have it on my console looking amazing again. I cannot wait. I always feel like with like remasters, I want to buy them because especially with Skyrim, it's one of my favourite games of all time. And I have it in my head as this like idyllic, amazing game that I've put hundreds of hours into. And now I can go back and play it and it will look as good as my brain remembers it. That's amazing for me. So yeah, I cannot wait for Skyrim Remastered. And it is yet another one of the games that has an October release date. Or does it? Yeah, it does. <laughs> it does have an October release date. There are so many games with October release dates, like October 20-something. I'm going to be so skint in October. Number three. Ah, right, that was five. And this is three. <laughs> is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, which looks beautiful. I mean, I've been playing Zelda games for quite a while, and I think this really looks like a genuine kind of shift in the franchise. They're going for something completely different, kind of going against the conventions of what previous Zelda games were like. But it looks amazing. I mean, it sounds so stupid, but I was watching the gameplay they were showing and the demos on the Nintendo Treehouse, and I got so excited about the fact that you could change his clothes at one point. You changed it, they changed his like trousers, and I actually squeed. I was like, come on! So yeah, I cannot wait for The Legend of Zelda so much. It's been such a long time coming and it looks like they're doing an absolutely cracking job. So well done guys. And also new Amiibos and you know I'm going to get those. Number two is Sea of Thieves, which I've been looking forward to greatly since last year when they first showed it off. I think that's a great idea having a multiplayer pirate game. I cannot wait. I've said that so many times in this video, but I'm so excited for getting all my friends together, having a pirate crew, maybe with you guys. That would be so good. I can't wait to get drunk in it and play music and wipe the poop deck. <laughs> I love multiplayer games where you can just kind of have a banter with your mates and everything. Anything like that is like my idea of heaven and which what I think of I think of like amazing games. But I can't wait to crash my ship. <laughs> and it's single water and have everyone panicking and I can just imagine the craziness that's going to ensue but I've been so sad for that such a long time and I really like the way they showed it off in the press conference that was kind of like a let's play but not really but I think that was really good marketing actually on their half and I thought it was very, it sold the game really well for me so yeah, Sea of Thieves, I can't wait to play you so please hurry up and get to me and number one, my most 
favouritest game that they showed at E3 this year was... We Happy Few. Now, I am pumped for this. I actually saw footage of this because I know it's been out as like a bit of an alpha build on PC. And I've seen a few Let's Players play it over the last year or so, and I've been fascinated with it ever since. But I kind of hadn't heard about it for a while, and seeing it in E3 this year, and that demo that they showed or trailer was just amazing. A bit with the piñata rat. Jesus. <laughs> that was insane. It gives me like a proper like bioshock -y vibe, and I adore Bioshock, and considering we didn't get any information about the Bioshock bundle this year, well, at E3 anyway, I am pumped for this. I love creepy stuff. It's set in England. I can't wait to hear all the stereotypical British voices and judge them. <laughs> but I cannot wait for it. It looks like the kind of game I've been waiting for for such a long, long time. I need a game like this that makes me feel creepy and has a good story and oh, it just looks amazing. I cannot wait for that game to come out. I've said I can't wait so many times in this video, but I don't care because I'm so excited! <sighs> It's a good time to be a gamer guys, it really is. But anyway guys, that wraps up my video of my top 10 games of E3, including my honourable mentions, so not really a 10, but you know, whatever. <laughs> but yeah guys, let me know what your favourite games were of E3 in the comments down below. I can't wait to read what everyone liked. But yes, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks guys, bye!